Hey, how's it going? Um, my girlfriend's out dog sitting for uh, for some friends right now, so I thought I'd bring this guy home and put it right here on the kitchen counter uh, and do some routine maintenance I have to do. I started with a tag lathe, and that's that's a really nice machine. It's really well made. It's teeny tiny though. I think it was quarter horsepower, I want to say. The shame with having such a limited horsepower machine is that you can't really use carbide insert tooling, because if you really want to use carbide insert tooling properly, you've got to sort of at least cut about half the nose radius, and even deeper if you actually want to break a chip. I ground my own tools too, but it's pretty convenient when you sort of break an insert to just replace it with the same geometry and be able to keep going. So I like that a lot. So when I started this project, it actually started out as just the automatic tool changer. And I was like, uh, you know what? I should just make the rest of the machine. So I did. This guy I'd say is probably three quarters done. It's more or less functional now. Uh, there's a few things I have to work on. The electronics is a bit of a rat's nest at the moment. I started out using a smooth stepper, which is in my tangle of wires at the moment. It's not exactly as portable as I was hoping. I thought it would be kind of funny if I had this teeny tiny CNC lathe that I could pick up like a boom box and walk around with, but then I have to lug around a big Windows XP tower to make it run. So I was trying to figure out some kind of a networkable computer with, with the, not the drivers, but like a motion controller built into it. And I was working towards that. I got the big and black and all that. I got a shield for it or a cape, I guess. Um, and then I heard about this thing called uh, Masso from Hein Technologies. And I guess it's just basically a teeny tiny, like, full-fledged computer with a motion controller in it and opto-isolated inputs and outputs and stuff. So I'll, <laughs> I actually just ordered one of those. Um, yeah, the girlfriend doesn't know about that one either. Hmm. Anyways, that should be getting here soon, so hopefully I'll have some setup footage on that, but... I guess the main thing is I haven't covered anything on this lathe yet on YouTube, so I had to bring it home to do some sort of maintenance on it. Um, I accidentally ran this guy past its travel, the uh, x-axis, and let some balls out of the guides, which is a little bit annoying, but <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at putting it back in. So this machine is one horsepower. I'm going to make different spindles for it. It's got two tool turrets. It's got one for drills here. It's got one for turning tools here. Both of those are stepper motor driven. I'm going to write the plugins for those. And I'm hoping to integrate those with the uh, Masso controller when I get it. It's got linear guideways on X and Z. It's got a ball screw on Z and a precision lead screw on X. Uh, that was just a, a size constraint thing. It's got clear path servos on both axes. It's got a tray down here for chips, like a toaster oven kind of, but cooler. So yeah, I just thought I'd bring this home and um, take out the parts I need for, for the maintenance and perhaps uh, talk you guys through uh, at least the cross slide. All right, so there's the turning tool holder. You can see it's sort of a, a wedge lock system that holds the tools in. That's not rust, that's uh, colored oxidation. I just heat treated some wedges today so I can start loading this guy up with tools. This is just the CCMT right hand tool. I've uh, got one of these, uh, I think it's a VNMG that I'm hoping to put in. And uh, you know, maybe a left hand tool, probably a parting tool, threading tool. I think I'll fill it up pretty quickly. No live tools yet. <sighs> So here's the uh, the drilling turret. I uh, I went over this quickly in another video. I actually I kind of messed up a little bit and I put a uh, an accidental offset on it. So I had to shim it with some just some Delrin for now. But eventually I'll use a more precise shim to get it just right. I have actually done some drilling with this and it works really really well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I've got a boring bar on here too with uh, what looks like a destroyed insert. Um, and yeah, I've just uh, yeah, it's funny when you get this small spotting drills all of a sudden become sort of your workhorse drills and got the uh, itty bitty little center drill there. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with that guy. So this was only supposed to ever have one turret. That was how it was designed. So you can see I only really allowed for the one turret position. I thought about making a new carriage, but 
it seemed like an awful lot of work. Uh, I was, I'm getting a little impatient with not being able to run it. So I figured I'd make this adapter in the meantime. Uh, you can see I just had it on here as a test fit though. And of course, I, you know, test cut while I was at it. I didn't have these holes drilled yet. So as you can imagine, as soon as I did the test cut, she moved on me. So that's actually the objective of today is just to take the carriage off so I can take it in and drill these holes. It's funny, as I take these things apart after test fitting them and test running them and stuff, I consistently surprise myself with how loose I leave some things and it still runs. So this is the original carriage. Well, I mean, it's, I guess, still the carriage. Um, probably redo it eventually. These indexes here fit my old tool turret. One of the big constraints I set my, for myself with that tool turret was a 25 by 50 mounting pattern, which in hindsight I probably didn't need. So this bellows makes everything look super professional, but I ended up rescuing it out of a garbage bin from my work. As I like to say, one man's trash ends up in a bin on one of my shelves. There we go. All right, you can see the lead screw and the, the end bearing and all that. This end bearing doesn't really do anything. It basically just prevents it from whipping. It doesn't take any load or anything like that. Uh, whipping is basically when you have uh, a screw that's too long and too thin. If you run it fast enough, it'll start whipping around and you can hear slapping noises when that happens. It basically destroys all the bearings and components and things. It sounds awful and it wears the screw out really fast, obviously, so it should be avoided with impunity. So what I'm about to do now is very important. I'm going to back these fasteners out, even though they're not coming off, and I'm going to leave them. That's mainly because when I undo these guys, they're going to slide right down, and I'm going to lose all the balls again. So from here, you can see how the carriage is attached to the rails. You've got the rail carriages here and lead nut here, and I'm just going to... Now I just have to undo the nut. Awesome, there you go. So the first thing that everyone I show this to is tempted to do is turn this upside down. Not gonna do that, a lot of fasteners in there. So here's the lead screw. It's from a company called Kirk, I think. It was also a destock from work. There was a, it was a bent screw basically, but obviously I only needed a little piece of it, so I took a piece that wasn't bent and works great. Uh, these guys are THK, I think. Oh no, they're ICO, sorry, IKO. Um, and I just got these from eBay. Um, they're industrial surplus and they're, they're still in good condition. Actually, when I got them, uh, it looked like someone had let the balls out and poorly repacked them. So that could very well be what earned them the, uh, the used classification. This is the, uh, I guess, the saddle. So you can see where the uh, linear guides attach um, and as well as the ball screw flange. Not a whole lot else to show you. This is a lead nut that I came up with. Uh, I'm not gonna take it off now because it's it's on there, but it's basically, uh, it's adjustable with two screws. You can adjust the backlash. So I'm pretty happy with that. The bearing arrangement up here is actually pretty interesting. I've got sort of a, uh, a double shouldered shaft kind of thing with two 608 bearings on it and then this actually threads into it and then I've got a socket head cap screw that locks the threads. Uh, that's worked really well so far. It's kind of hard to put bearings properly on a, a small lead screw like this because if you turn down any amount of it you'll end up with almost no material left but if you leave too much and you don't cut through the root of the thread then you end up with a really bad fit for the bearing and it just ends up not doing its job anyways. So the next things I've got to do on here, I've got to put an encoder on the back of the spindle so I can do some threading. I've got to make an enclosure for it. I finally made an enclosure I was happy with and then I tripped on it and now there's a huge dent in the middle of it. Uh, I've also sort of thought of a different concept I want to try. The way it is now, I've got itty bitty sliding doors I'm going to put on, but they're so itty bitty you just can't do anything in here. So what I want is the sliding doors and then I'll have the whole lid lift up if I really want to get in here and service something. I want to get the Masso controller put on. Uh, some people have asked me about coolant. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I've run lathes without coolant before and it's usually pretty okay. If you're doing a finish pass, you give it a little squirt of like WD-40 or something and it's fine. Um, although I was thinking you can get those really small WD-40 canisters 
And I was thinking it'd be kind of cool if you could put one of those in here somehow and have it like auto trigger on the finishing pass or something. So um, I'll definitely look in the post processor and see if there's any kind of uh, relay I can access. Well, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to take this guy to the shop and I'm going to drill it out so I can fit the two turrets on without having it all bend and stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends and on forums and stuff. I mean, the traffic is great. The subscribers are great. It sort of keeps me, keeps me on track and keeps me from getting behind in this. I've also got an Instagram. I'll include a link in the description below. And I've got a Patreon if you want to contribute to this project or another project I'm working on. Until next time, cheers!